So um, I laid out a piece of cardboard so when we're painting, you can actually see uh, where you're where you're working. But then when you're done, you can lift off your workstation and take it anywhere you need while you do the rest of your armor assembly. And I'm putting on little blue gloves just so that if I do get paint on my hands, I don't have to go running off immediately. You don't have to wear gloves, but you do want to be careful when you're painting. Um, and so I have three colors, right? I've got the, the purple here, I've got the light violet, and I've got a silver, okay? And so I'm going to mix those to make the web space of my um, dragon wing a slightly lighter color than the boning. Okay, the boning is the high part, so that's what's going to get painted last. But that means I need to mix the colors I want into just a cup. And all I did was I cut the cup itself down so I could fit the brush in. So I'm just going to add a small amount. I didn't realize that these little um, paint containers come with tiny brushes, which is really exciting if you're doing detail work because you have multiple tiny brushes. The bigger containers do not have a brush, and so that can be a little, uh, little different <laughs> in terms of process. I also leave paper towels around just as I'm working because um, Sometimes you have a spill or you get something where you don't want it and you just want to make sure that everything's um, easy to clean up. So my entire veg tan piece is dry and ready to go. I did some curve forming uh, overnight so that I've got some volumes. But as I go to mix, the first thing I've got to do is make sure my paint is evenly mixed. And then I can come back with the tiny brushes and do my highlights and my lowlights at any point, okay? So what I'm gonna do, just start out on the wide spots and I'm bringing my brush in to the details. And the nice part is if you've textured your um, leather armor and you do a wash, which we're gonna do after this, it's gonna bring the highlights and lowlights out in a different way. And so you can do all of your detailing work very quickly by just brushing on the paint and then wiping it off. But your first coat, the leather is always so thirsty that it's going to take a lot of the, the paint immediately. And so then I'm going to come back with the boning and I'm going to paint that with my solid purple. Okay. So right now I'm just sort of rolling it over the edge. getting more paint on my large chip brush. I think in the kits, there's a one inch chip brush and this is a one and a half inch chip brush, but I cut it to a bevel so that it actually fits the way I want. So when you're painting your part right now, you're just trying to get the base color, whatever base color you've decided for your armor to get almost total coverage over the design. So you're bringing it right up to the edge of your details, right? And then you can come back along this line here to re-emphasize that with your small brush, okay? So if you emboss something like you did, um, you know, an image, uh, you can come back and hit that with the detail brush, but it's okay if you get a little paint on it now while you're doing all of your background base colors. So it takes a little while to get all those wide sections covered, but that's why you have the big brush in your kits. And so when I mixed my um, my webbing, you know, this uh, base color, I used equal parts of the violet and the silver. Let's 
this around so everyone can see. So now I've got to get that edge and really make sure to roll it. So as I'm taking the edge of my brush, I'm trying to find that line where my emboss was and get the paint to fill up to that line, but not really go on sort of the boning shape that's there. And at this point, the chip brush is so big, I probably won't be able to get into those details. And that's okay. Um, I'll just have to come back and fill that in with a smaller brush. But you're going to paint the outside and you're going to paint the inside of your bracer because you don't want it to mold, right? You want to make sure that you get all those little details sealed up because if you leave your, your preformed wet veg tan out too long, it'll get mildew and uh, it's not really a good look. Moldy armor. I'm going to try and get all the fin details, make sure I didn't miss anything here. And again, it's okay to go over the boning on this first pass. You're trying to avoid it, but since my boning is a darker purple, it's going to be very easy to hide those um, overlaps with just a little bit of paint. So now, the last bit where I'm going to have trouble. Again, I could come in and try and do all the detail work here, but I'm just going to take the chip brush and then lay the paint right in that groove where the last of that webbing is because it's so hard to make sure that the vegetable tan soaks up enough paint in that region. But I really like the sheen that this pearlescent silver gives. So if you've got a metallic paint, it's really going to pop, which is pretty fun. I think with the, um, the bracer pauldron demo with the monochromatic red and, and black, that's, that's good. You know, you get one color and it's popping on the back, black background, but it's nice to get a little fancier with the design and really start playing with the colors. Okay, so this is all of my um, base coat, right? So we've got the tips and we've got the web space. That's all filled in the way I want. And I'm just doing one more check to make sure I haven't missed any of the details that might be hard to get into. And if you're not sure, just come back and lay it on thick. You could arguably just paint the whole thing with your base coat and then come back and do your detail work. But I like to have a good indicator of where my lines start. So I try to leave it dry. But that is an aesthetic choice. Okay. So the leather dries pretty quick, but you'll see that my hand, my gloved hand has purple paint on it now. My brush hand is completely clean. So you just want to be aware of that as you're painting, that you're going to have one dirty hand and one clean hand, and you don't want to switch your grips very often because you're going to have to go into the, the sink and touch the knobs and rinse your hand off to do any of the work you need to um, to change brushes or anything beyond that. So I'm going to take my painted brush. I'm just going to leave it in this cup of water here. Nope. And then set that to the side with my clean hand and then grab another cup because I've got multiple colors. You could use the same, um, oh goodness, I need to get like channel locks for this, it's so tight. You can use the same cup for your colors, just know that it's going to get a little bit of blending. So if you have totally different colors, like yellow and blue, um, that can be a problem. So it's always good to have a spare cup laying around for that. And I don't need a lot of the dark purple because I'm just using a very fine brush. And this is the brush that I've got, is this tiny one. 
So that one you can take more time to do controlled painting to get those detail works the way you want. But it's going to take a lot longer to do. And as you do it, um, you're going to realize you need to do more than one coat. 